One of the crops that I really like to grow in the polytunnel are climbing beans, which are also known as green beans, string beans, snap beans, and by a variety of other names. In Ireland, we generally call them climbing French beans, and I only grow them in the sheltered climate of the polytunnel, as this type of bean doesn't thrive in the cool and windy conditions that we often have here in Ireland. They can be a very high value and desirable crop, and I've had some great harvests over the years. But I have wondered if it is really worth taking up the valuable growing space with this crop, especially when runner beans can be so productive outside, which are almost as good, but not quite in my opinion. But this year we grew another batch of climbing French beans in the polytunnel, and it was amazing to see how many beans were ready to harvest every few days, especially during the second wave. This is a climbing or vining warm season plant, which I include in with the cucumbers, tomatoes and other crops that I grow up twine hung from the polytunnel structure. And I always grow them after a spring crop has been harvested from the same bed. And as with all the other heat loving crops, I struggle to find a balance between getting the most out of the late spring and early summer crops and getting the heat loving plants into the ground as early as possible. These beans are a relatively easy crop to grow, and I've had success with direct sowing, but I often sow the seeds in pots a few weeks earlier to give the plants a head start. They do need string or twine to climb up, which I usually tie around the root ball or buried stick at the bottom, and a wire or rope strung across a polytunnel structure at the top. And I tend to have three or four plants at the base of each length of twine. The first few shoots often need help finding the twine, but after that they easily climb and become a large wall of green within the polytunnel. The flowers of this type of bean don't need pollination by bees or other insects, which makes them more suitable for growing in the polytunnel. And apart from watering and keeping a few of the vines from wandering into the other beds, the only real task is harvesting, which takes a lot of time. The seeds for this crop were sown on May 9th, and the six pots transplanted 60 centimeters apart on May 28th, with four young plants to climb up each string. The first few beans were ready for picking on July 6th, but the substantial harvest started about five or six late days later. So it was just over two months from the sowing to the first harvest, and we continued to harvest this first flush or wave of beans every few days over a period of about three weeks. After that, the number of beans that are being produced dropped right off, which is something that I've come to expect. It seems that the plants produce a first batch of flowers, and then there is a delay until a second batch of flowers clusters develop. I had always thought that the second batch of flowers was only produced after I had harvested most of the pods from the first batch, which had interrupted the production of seeds and triggered the plants into producing a second batch of flowers in order to restart the cycle of reproduction. But I'm not so sure about that anymore. After a lull in the amount of beans that can be harvested, the plants started to produce a lot more pods, and I was surprised at how much more was available to be harvested. Over another three week period, we were able to harvest more than double what was produced in the first wave. I don't remember the second wave of a similar crops in the past being so much better than the first wave, and usually I had found them to be much less productive. I now suspect that the second wave being produced has very little to do with how many of the pods I pick from the first wave. And it has more to do with how the plants grow in general. The first flush of flowers and pods come from the main vine that first climbs up the twine, and the second wave seems to come from the side shoots that simply develop later. It might also be related to the vines hitting the top of the plastic and having nowhere to go, with some of them being constricted and others hanging down. This is all something that I want to pay more attention to next year, but I'm interested in how it might relate to the harvest being so good this year, especially with the second wave. Apart from a few plants dying back early in the season, possibly from damage during transplanting, the rest of the plants seemed quite healthy, uh, with only a few of them developing rotting stems in the autumn when the harvest had almost finished. And late in the season, there were a few pods that didn't seem to develop and turn soft, but for the most part, it seems that we were able to provide these plants with everything they needed to grow well. And part of it might be that simple, that crops in the past suffered in some way that these ones didn't. But I think a lot of it is more about timing and the plants being at a stage to be able to take advantage of the warm weather when we got it. In the past few years, I've planted these climbing beans later in the season in order to get more out of the early season crops. And this pushed the development of the plants so that the second wave was only just starting when the weather started to turn too cold for the plants to really thrive. This year, the seeds were sown earlier and the weather has been quite warm at times, which would speed up the growth of the plants as well. 
And probably more importantly, we have had some really sunny and warm weather at the end of August and into September, just as the second wave was starting to become really productive. Of course, it's also possible that the slightly different variety of climbing bean that I grew this year would typically produce more in the second wave. I suspect it is a combination of factors, a productive variety suited to the context, good soil fertility, regular watering, decent weather, and the seed sown early enough to capture the warmth when we had it. We were able to harvest 10 kilograms of beans over a five week period of the first wave, and then another 18 kilograms from the second wave over another approximately five week period. Most of these beans were really high quality and small enough to be really tender, although we were delayed in harvesting a few times and some of these beans would have become a little bit more tough and also weighed a fair amount more. But a total harvest of almost 30 kilograms from about 3.6 square meters of bed space produces a yield of almost 8 kilograms per square meter, which compares quite well with a lot of the other crops I grow. So this definitely isn't a low yielding crop, if the conditions are right. But it is hard to determine the actual area taken up by tall crops like this as they can overshadow adjacent beds. So comparing actual yields with other crops is not so straightforward. Interestingly, looking at the pattern of when plants produce the beans over the course of the season, it is hard to see a definite pattern over the past few years when I grew similar crops in the same polytunnel. All the crops had the first wave that trails off, but it is only this season that saw such a significant increase in what we were able to harvest from the second wave, even though the first wave didn't produce as much per square meter as some of the other seasons. Some of this is due to the typical size that I harvested the beans, as delaying harvesting a few days can allow the beans to get quite a bit bigger. But different weather patterns each season could be much more of a factor, and I didn't pay close enough attention to be able to determine what was going on and what could be causing these sorts of differences. Climbing French beans are also very easy to save seeds from, as apparently they don't cross-pollinate. But most years I don't save seeds from these plants, because I felt that leaving a few pods to develop might reduce the chance of a greater harvest later on, if the plants felt that their reproductive job was done. But I'm no longer sure that this is really an important factor, and this year I set aside a few clusters of pods that would develop early in the season for seed saving. Another issue that I found is that the pods tend to go moldy in the high humidity of the polytunnel, especially under the shade of the leaves. So I removed a lot of the leaves from around these pods as they developed, so that the sun and air movement would have a better chance of keeping the pods dry. This worked well, and I was able to harvest quite a few pods for seed saving, and I didn't notice a significant difference between the amount of pods produced on these plants compared to the others. This is interesting to me, and it opens up the possibility of changing my approach to harvesting beans from these plants. I usually search carefully when harvesting to try to remove all of the pods, partially because I wanted to maximize the harvest, but I also didn't want to let any hidden pods grow too big and develop seeds, thinking that this might reduce yields later. But perhaps I could be a lot less thorough and significantly faster when harvesting, and any pods that I miss can simply be discarded when I find them later, or they could be left to dry for seed saving, and this could save a significant amount of time searching. Or I could also harvest the developing seeds when they're still green for eating and discard the softening pod, but this is a whole other factor, and I would really like to explore different varieties that are better suited for harvesting at different stages. The amount of time taken to harvest and the need to harvest very regularly are the main downsides of this crop, in my opinion, especially during the really busy times of the year. But if I'm not so thorough in searching for all of the beans that are ready to pick, this could reduce the time spent harvesting every few days, even if the overall yield of tender green beans was reduced. But I think it might be more important to do what I can to improve the production of beans over a longer period of time, and I feel that I still have a fair amount to learn in how to do that. Maintaining the health of the plants is one key aspect that I think I'm getting better at, but perhaps having good weather conditions when the plants are producing is a much more dominant factor. The only way I can really control this is by sowing earlier in the season, so that the plants have a better chance of catching the warm weather when it does come but this would mean reducing the availability of some of the spring and early summer crops. I also think it would be useful to grow two batches several weeks apart so that the dip in productivity of one batch could coincide with the wave of harvest of the other batch. This could even out the harvest over a longer period of time, but growing a few different varieties could achieve similar results. 
And I think it would be useful to explore growing different numbers of plants up each of the support twines to try to find a density of plants that makes it easier to harvest and gives a space for the plants to grow over a longer period of time. No doubt there are other options that can reduce the effort while still maintaining high quality and yield, but as with many things, there is probably a balance that really depends on the context.